perhaps an opening here for New England. Now then, Andrea Fontas already on a yellow card, will receive a race. And for the second week running, Kansas City have a centre half sent off. Welcome to Instant Replay for MLS Match Day 9. I'm Andrew Wiebe, and we're taking a closer look at all the most controversial calls in Major League Soccer. We start with an offside call that had the crew fan base up in arms in Charlotte. 1-0 to the home team, 89th minute, Aiden Morris, goal! They're splitting the points, right? Wrong. VAR Soren Stoika spots this, and he gets in John Freeman, the referee's ear. He says, go to the monitor, check this out. You are going to see... This is clear and obvious offside, and I completely agree. Check out the freeze frame. Aiden Morris's foot is, I don't know, maybe six inches offside, but six inches is plenty. Now, the confusion here comes from the screenshot that you see on the broadcast. Columbus folks are diving in my mentions. They're saying, wait a minute, wait a minute. This is the wrong screenshot. This is not when the pass was played. What is John Freeman looking at? Well, I put on my detective hat, and I'm here to tell you that he's not looking at the screenshot you see on the broadcast. Compare the positioning of the players on that screenshot with what you see over Freeman's shoulder. Is it the same? Eh, it's close, but it's not the same. Now, compare the positioning of the players with the correct moment of the pass. Yes, they're identical. So while John Freeman was looking at the point of contact of the pass, the moment that Aiden Morris was offside, we're all looking at some other screenshot that has nothing to do with anything. More offside minutia for you. Stoppage time in the first half, LA Austin. Sebastian Drusi scores a goal. Oh my gosh, do Austin need it, but it's called off. Now, why is that, Austin supporters ask me? Because John Gallagher is clearly onside when the ball is played in behind. Yes, that is true. Gallagher is onside, but Driussi is not. He is sitting back in an offside position, nursing some sort of knock. But when the ball comes into the attacking third, up he pops and he prepares himself. But he also gets in the way of a Galaxy defender bumps that defender a little bit even. And that means he is offside. Here is the law. If a player, in this case Driussi, is in an offside position and they move into the way of an opponent and impede that opponent's progress, blocks that opponent, that offense should be penalized under Law 12. That is the offside law. So yes, Driussi is complaining, but when he gets in the way of the Galaxy defender and bumps him just a little bit, that's an easy offside call. Well done to the referee crew on this one. One more offside call, and we will keep it moving. NYCFC's Gabi Pereira wanted this beautiful goal in the 15th minute, but it was called offside. VAR, Yunus Marcacci flagged Fotis Pozakos, and they got this one right. Right, you might say? I don't see where the offside occurred. Well, it took a little while on the broadcast, too, for everybody to catch up, but watch as the original ball is played wide to Pereira. Yeah, it's a little bit tight there, and you got to look, maybe squint, but oh, he is clearly and obviously in an offside position. Well done to the referee crew on this one. Okay, Editor Phil, cue the Bruce Arena bemused face. Yes, there it is for the second week running. Sporting Kansas City at Gillette against the Revs, 57th minute. Giacomo Veroni is in behind. Here comes Andrew Fontas, and down goes Veroni. Out comes a second yellow card from Nima Sagafi. You're gone, he says, red card. Alejandro Mariscal flags Sagafi to go to the monitor. There's a review, but what for, we ask ourselves. Could it be for a possible foul on Vrioni on Danny Rosero at midfield? Originally, that's what I'm thinking, so let's take a closer look at that particular part of the play. Rosero wants it. He's pulling his jersey. He's complaining to Sagafi immediately after the goal is scored, but I don't see a pull with the evidence I have on video. I don't see Rosero's jersey pull away from the body. I don't see overly physical contact. I see a defender and a forward doing a little bit of hand fighting, which is normal in this situation, and Rosero going down. To me, this is not enough for a foul live. Just got to be better, Rosero, when the ball's played in behind, and I don't see evidence here of any clear and obvious contact that would merit a foul on review. So if I'm throwing that out, it must be for what? Well, it's for dog so, because Sagafi comes back, and takes away the second yellow and gives a straight red card. I can understand that decision. Look where Rioni is when he is fouled. He's going to have a left-footed shooting opportunity, and Rosero is not going to be able to recover in time to challenge that shot. I would call that an obvious goal-scoring opportunity, if not an absolutely perfect one. But I do understand the perspective of Sasha Kleschen 
on MLS 360 who said for him, this is not an obvious goal scoring opportunity. For Sasha, Vrioni is pushing that ball just a little bit wide. For me, that still doesn't negate the 1v1 opportunity he has with the goalkeeper, so I think this is just fine from the referee crew. Either way, it's a red card. All right, two more plays. This one's a bit debatable. 52nd minute, Orlando, D.C. Donovan Pines is rising up, and he's all alone at the near post, which seems quite strange. Until you watch it back and realize Cesar Arujo goes down. Did he get pushed down? Did he get fouled? Arujo is saying, yeah, I, definitely, I did. I'm not convinced. I don't see Donovan Pine's arm come out and push. Is there contact? Yes, there is going to be contact in the box on corner kicks. I think Arujo is looking for it. I think he's getting in the way. He knows Pines is bigger than he is, and when he feels that contact, instead of trying to defend, he's just like, no, nah, no, nah, I'm going down. I'm hoping for the call, and it just didn't work out for him. You might have a different perspective. Let me know. And we finish with this play in the 20th minute of Philly, Toronto. Mikko Ura scores the goal, but Sean Johnson is not particularly happy about what he thinks could be a foul on Julian Carranza in the lead up to the play. Watch closely here. Johnson comes out. There's a little contact. Johnson goes down. He's not in the perfect position. The ball recycles and boom, deflection, ball in the back of the net. For me, no foul on this play. Carranza does not move into Johnson. He has every right to be in this position where the ball is going. There's some contact, yes, but attacking players have just as much of a right to be in that spot as goalkeepers do. No foul for me, good goal. All right, that's it for this edition of Instant Replay. As always, I put a tweet out every single match night asking for all your nominations. If you see something, say something. Really, literally, anything, the smallest thing, please, with game and minute as well. For editor Phil Lavanco and our producer Rich Hernandez, I'm Andrew Wiebe. We'll see you next time.